Why does it have a door? Anyways. Let's talk about elemental gates for 50 minutes. Elemental gates. The magical things that stop you from doing things. No, you imbecile. That's just a normal gate. But if you use a Skylander of the same element as the gate, boom, you're through. And going through these gates normally leads you to small areas that offer a little side challenge. But why do them, you ask? Magical hats. But one thing I never realised about elemental gates is how many of them there are. So I thought it would be a fun idea to rank every single elemental gate. Haha, <laughs> this definitely won't have a damaging effect on my sanity. We're mainly going to be ranking these gates on how much fun I had with them. But some other things include design and originality. Also, I will not be including the Sensei Realms from Scanner's Imaginators. I know some people consider these as a type of elemental gate, but they're just a bit too different from the norm. And the same can be said for the vehicle gates from Superchargers. I mean, it's just far too different. Also, they all suck. And I only recently found out that the 3DS games also have elemental gates. I already have enough to deal with, so we're not going to be including these ones. So with all that said, let's get on to number 157, are you kidding? My absolute least favourite elemental gate in the series is the undead gate from Battlefield. On paper, this gate seems like a pretty cool idea. It takes the bomb rolling mechanic, which is seen in the level, and makes an obstacle course revolved around it. The problem is... The bomb rolling is terrible. I can't quite express my hatred towards the bomb rolling in this game. I'm not sure if it's just the Xbox version or not, but it's insufferable. These bombs are impossible to control. Sometimes you walk into these bombs and they roll as you'd expect them to, perfectly fine. But most of the time, the bomb is either going to move way too far away from you, or maybe even not move at all. And to make matters worse, this gate demands incredibly precise bomb rolling, and there's just no way to do it. You're either going to get really lucky with this gate, or be rolling bombs for the rest of your damn life. Just awful. And it's not going to get much better for a very long time. And next up we have the Water Gate from Rampart Ruins. Never before has anything in Skylanders made me feel this uncomfortable. Basically, you meet this talking stone block and his back's really itchy, so you push him against the walls to itch his back. Now already, that's a bit of a strange idea for a gate, and the really creepy way that he talks just makes it worse. Oh, perfect. Thanks a ton. Here, take this. It's just, overall, so weird. So remember kids, don't talk to strangers. Especially if they're sentient stone blocks that want you to itch their backs. The air gate from Lair of the Golden Queen is so unfun. You just walk down this long hallway with these tornadoes flying towards you. If you get hit by one, then it'll send you all the way back to the start. And the hitboxes on these things are brutal. It might just be because I was using Gusto, and he's a bit of a fat boy, but it seemed like I would touch these tornadoes even when I was trying really hard not to. I got there in the end, but it took me an embarrassing amount of time. I apologise for any and all PTSD flashbacks, but next up we have the Fire Gate from Oil Spill Island. When I was younger, this gate was an absolute nightmare, and I'm not happy to report that, going back to it now, I'm still just as bad. If you were fortunate enough to miss this gate when you played through, let me explain it to you. You'll be travelling through a massive pipe maze. Walk through a pipe and it'll take you to a completely different place. This is a complete guessing game. You pick a pipe, then pick another pipe, then pick another pipe and hope for the best. I think you're supposed to memorise which pipes you've travelled through, 
but all of these areas look the exact same, making it really difficult. It took me a long time to get both of the collectibles in this gate. Maybe that's because I was just guessing the pipes to go in the entire time without even trying to memorise them, but whatever, this gate still sucks. Well, it's that moment you've all been waiting for. The Dark Gate Pinball Section. Even though a good few of the pinball sections in Trap Team are absolutely diabolical, the only Dark Gate that I think has a bad pinballing section is the one in Monster Marsh. And yes, this one is bad. You're just constantly flinging pinballs all over the place and it takes so long. That's all I have to say really. It's just ridiculously long and incredibly tedious. At number 152, we have the Earth and Magic Gate from Chaos's Fortress. This fishing section could make the devil cry, it's just so horrendous. First of all, it's a fishing section which is already inherently bad, but look at all of the eels swimming around the place. Whoever made this just wanted to be annoying, and they did that quite well. Up next is the magic gate from Frostfest Mountains. It's a turret section, and I know that that would justify its placement, but I'd also like to add that if you hit one of the mines, then you have to restart the entire thing over again. So I think I rest my case. The Earth Gate from Golden Desert is unbelievably stupid. Look at this, the hat is sitting right next to the gate while there's a pile of money that you have to push blocks to get to. This doesn't make any sense whatsoever. This just messes with my brain. Next up is Leviathan Lagoon's Water Gate. You know that a gate is poorly designed when it's literally impossible to beat without a long range Skylander. You have to chase those Hob and Yarrow guys, but whenever you get close to them, they run away from you. I swear there's meant to be some sort of puzzle behind this that they just forgot to add because it's literally only possible with Gilgrunt, Zap or Whamshell. Thank god three of the four water scanners in this game do have a long range move. But uh, a moment of silence to the slam bam players. The Golden Desert Air Gate is one of the slowest things I have ever played in my life. It wouldn't take that long if it weren't for the platform staying still for about 10 seconds before they move. I'm sure this is pretty painful to watch, so let's move on. Next up is the magic gate in the Nightmare Express. All that this gate has are three little platforms. Get past them and the hat is all yours. But these three platforms have been designed so that when they move up and down so slightly, it is impossible to jump from one to the other. You actually have to concentrate on when these little platforms move up and down to be able to jump across them. Make fun of me all you want, but this was a pain. A serious pain. The light gate in Future of Skylands has this weird puzzle that I don't understand. It's not really explained to you, but some of the platforms move when you jump on them, and then there are these levers that you pull. I ended up just jumping on some platforms and pulling some switches and somehow I made it to the end. But it was confusing, and I don't like being confused. Up next is the water gate from Old Gyro Adventure. It's literally just an empty room with a hat in the middle. Jesus, like no obstacles, no enemies, absolutely nothing. The tech gate in Molken Mine is the slowest, most boring block puzzle of all time. It could make someone with insomnia fall asleep. And not much better than that is the dark gate from the ultimate weapon. First of all, it is just a pretty lame gate, but to add on top of that, there's nothing to do with the dark element here. Now this ladies and gentlemen, is what we call laziness. At number 142 is the undead gate from Winter Keep. This gate is all about shoveling. And my god, did I forget how tedious it is. For some reason, if you try to shovel too fast, then it straight up won't work. 
you can actually see the shovel doing its animation, but for some reason nothing's happening. The shoveling alongside waiting for moving platforms really does make this a slow experience. The Chef Zeppelin air gate is just the Golden Desert air gate, but with less waiting around. But it still has the perfect amount of waiting around for me to not like it. Mount Cloudbreak's air gate is just a pretty dull and lazy turret section. And the life gate from Mudwater Hollow is a fishing section. But at least this one isn't annoying to do. But you know, still a fishing section. This gate is 10 seconds long. The undead gate from Time of the Giants is just really plain. It has a set of spikes to make it look slightly more interesting, but it doesn't work. At 136, it's the undead gate from Rumbletown. This gate throws in a few enemies, but that's kind of it. Although it is quite a weird looking gate, so that makes it a bit more memorable. Next up is the magic gate from Glacier Gully. This one is short and forgettable. That perfectly describes most of the gates we've talked about so far. Now onto the fire and water gate from Mount Cloudbreak. If this was just a water gate, then it would be decent. But the fact that it's supposed to introduce and show off the new dual gates, yet has absolutely nothing to do with the fire element, is completely stupid. Just keep the water platforms, but then have fire obstacles. It wouldn't have been that hard, guys. The Willikin Village Earth Gate is nothing special whatsoever. And that's a shame considering how good the actual level is. And then we have the Magic Gate from Willikin Workshop. This one is just boring and empty. But then there's also a bunch of presents lying around. Yep, that's definitely on theme with the magic element. The Lost City of Arcus Watergate just doesn't fit with the rest of the level. That level is filled to the brim with difficult enemies, but this gate feels really lonely. A couple of enemies here and there would have spruced up the place. The Junkyard Isles Fire Gate is pretty dull, but I do quite like the colour and design of the lava, so it gets a pass. At number 129 we have the fire gate from the secret sewers of Supreme Stink. I appreciate that this gate tries to do something different, but this is way too claustrophobic. And also I've personally never been a fan of 2D platforming in Skylanders, just doesn't work. Similar to that we have the earth gate from Sunscraper Spire. This one is better though because it has a lot more open space. Is it good though? Yeah, I'll get back to you on that one. The Magic Gate from Boney Islands offers you a series of very uninteresting light beam puzzles. Still better than fishing though. Next up is the Tech Gate from Telescope Towers. This gate is kinda cool and I like the idea behind it, but what really holds it back is how long it drags on for. Quite a shame actually. The Rampart Ruins Magic and Fire Gate. Uh, I have nothing to say about this, it's just a generic platforming section. Oh wait, there is something special about this one. It has a big Archean Barrel Blaster, for some reason. Okay, yeah, uh, let's see what we've got here. Oh, okay. Uninteresting 2D Section 1. Uninteresting 2D Section 2. Uninteresting 2D Section 3. Uninteresting 2D Section 4. Next up is the Fire Gate from Darklight Crypt. This gate has these random fake blocks which suddenly disappear when you touch them. But it isn't explained to you in the slightest. So unless you've already played this gate, you're going to be left pretty confused. I like the idea, I just wish it was executed better. Now onto the Molken Mountain Tech Gate. Oh look, it's another one that's 10 seconds long. And now we have the Chaos's Castle Tech Gate. Hmm. Does anyone see a recurring pattern here? Also, I'd just like to point out that this gate takes place before the Molken Mountain one. The Earth Gate from Falling Forest is really not impressive at all. It gives you a puzzle lock and a really easy fight, and that's it. In 116th place, 
is the tech gate from Operation Troll Rocket Steel. I remember this gate being very difficult from the last time I played it, but it was underwhelmingly easy this time. I was honestly pretty disappointed with the light gate from Soda Springs. Not a very special or interesting introduction to the light element. Next up is the dark gate from Sunscraper Spire. Now this is a pinball gate, but it is way too short and simple. But another way of looking at that is that it isn't an annoying pinball section, so you know what, I'm happy. Having a water gate in the secret sewers is a pretty cool idea. The only problem is the gate lasts for about 20 seconds. Ah, oh, the wasted potential. And now we have the Chef Zeppelin light gate. And it's just a generic block puzzle. Come on light gates, you're not doing great so far. Next up we have the Motleyville Air and Water Gate. This one is just a simple enemy gauntlet, and that's really it. And the same can be said about the Tech and Air Gate from Iron Joe Gulch. Just pretty average stuff. The Drill X's Big Rig Earth Gate is fine enough, but it's just too long for me to enjoy. At 108 we have the Tower of Time, Water and Life Gate. Unlike the other gates from the Tower of Time, this one doesn't use any of the level's mechanics, which is pretty lame. But you know, it's not bad by any means. Now on to the Magic and Life Gate from Boney Islands. This gate is built around the Amber Blocks, which are seen in the actual level. The problem is they don't use these blocks in a way that we haven't already seen. So it's not as interesting as you'd hope. The Tekken Earth Gate from Cascade Glade has a very basic and easy puzzle. But it is the second level so I'll cut it some slack. At 105 we have the Rainfish Riviera Earth Gate. I hope you like pushing snails. The Earth Gate from Boney Islands is incredibly okay. And the Rampart Ruins Earth Gate is incredibly okay. Then we got this one, it's got flipping tiles, you know. You see those tiles in the actual level. Oh my god. <sighs> Getting bored. I can't get bored. I need hydration. Much better. Okay, come on. You can do this. Okay. Next up, we have the Magic Gate from Telescope Towers. This one has a bunch of floating paintings, and I feel like there's supposed to be a puzzle here, but I just destroyed all of the paintings and then I got the hat. The NPC says something about doing it in a certain pattern, but I didn't really have to. At number 100, we have the Undead Gate from Rainfish Riviera. This gate kinda takes place in a haunted shipwreck, but I feel like they could have done a lot more with the idea. Right now it's just kinda okay. The Tekken Fire Gate from Frostfest Mountains offers you a simple fight. Can't go wrong with that. This also takes place during a meteor shower, which is pretty cool. Next up is the Undead Gate from the Willikin Workshop. This gate has a bunch of different rooms that you have to defeat all the enemies in to get to the next one. It kind of gives me cadaverous crypt vibes, but I don't know if that's intentional. The Soda Springs Tech Gate doesn't have a lot going on, but it does make for a good first level gate. The Chompy Mountain Magic Gate has you collecting flying coins. That's pretty weird. Which means that it's actually on theme with the magic element for once. At number 95 we have the Light Gate from the Midnight Museum. Just like the rest of the light puzzles, this kinda sucks. The only thing I like about this gate is the incredible design of the blocks. They look really cool. Next up we have the Life Gate from Quicksilver Vault. This feels like one of those terrible air gates, but done good. The moving platforms go by pretty fast, which not only means that you're not waiting around for ages, but it also makes it a bit more intense. Overall, the moving platform gates still aren't my favourites, but this is one of the best ones for sure. 
Next up is the second life gate from Rumbletown. I really, really don't know why there are two life gates in this level. Anyways, this gate takes place inside a house, and I love the design. Along with that, it's got a nice little fight and a pretty decent puzzle lock. This one is pretty solid. Next up is the Earth Gate from Bringing Order to Chaos. The only thing I can really say about this one is that you can roll over enemies with a ball. It makes you feel like a god. The Tower of Time Ear Gate features some of those fun ear mechanics that are seen in the actual level. I will admit, it kinda is just the exact same thing that's in the actual level. A little bit of variety would have been cool, but I still like the gate. At number 90, we have the Magic Gate from Darkwater Cove. I find this one quite forgettable, but I don't know why. It's a pretty fun one. Maybe it's because it has nothing to do with the magic element. I don't know. The Undead Gate from Crystal Eye Castle offers you a really challenging fight. It definitely caught me off guard, you know, being in Spire's adventure. Next up we have the Magic Gate from Bringing Order to Chaos. This one is quite hard to describe. It's like a big platforming section mixed with a big puzzle section. I really like the part where you have to get to the next section by bouncing on a bunch of bounce pads. But if you accidentally touch a teleportation pad, then you get sent back to the bottom. We now have the air gate from Cutthroat Carnival. Now this might just look like a very boring and plain gate. But then when you actually step inside of the area, a massive tornado forms in the background. I think it looks pretty cool and it's funny to see the chompies flying around inside of it. If only they did something visually interesting for the Auto Gyro Adventure Watergate. That would have changed everything. The Mirror of Mystery Life Gate proves that you don't always have to have an interesting gate, as long as it looks really nice. And this one looks really nice. Next up is the Fire Gate from the Winter Keep. This is definitely one of the more fun Swap Force gates. You start making your way across a bunch of floating platforms, but then suddenly you realise that they're dropping like flies. I'll be honest, it is pretty easy to get there in time, but it's still quite intense. The Life Gate from Mount Cloudbreak is a decent gate with a decent idea. If only there were more of them in Swap Force. Cascade Glade's Undead Gate is a very memorable one for me. I mean, the gate's got its own Greeble mini-boss, that's pretty cool. Sure, his dialogue is repetitive and annoying, but you get to kill him, so I think that makes up for it. Now we have the Fire and Undead Gate from Sheepwreck Islands. The combination of Undead and Fire looks pretty cool. Along with that, you'll be dodging flying fiery skulls and teleporting around with the level's main gimmick. This one is pretty fun. The Life Gate from Mystic Mel is pretty refreshing. It's got you bouncing around on grassy islands, planting those flower things from Phoenix Sanctuary, and even platforming across hot air balloons, goddammit. Despite that, I like this gate. I also really like how you can see all of the level in the background. It gives it a sense of depth. At number 80, we have the Tech Gate from the Nightmare Express. The idea for this one is simple. Get this bomb and blow up this wall. Except, it's not that simple. You're supposed to get there with these conveyor belts, but they slow you down far too much. So in order to get there in time, you have to create your own path with blocks. This one overall is just pretty good. It's not too short, but it also doesn't overstay its welcome. Take one good look at the life gate from Sky Highlands, and tell me that it isn't weird looking. Oh wait, that's impossible. This gate is just so bizarre. You first have to push some blocks outside of the gate to be able to get to the hat inside of the gate. This makes it really stand out from the crowd, not to mention that it's really good looking. Monster Marsh's Undead Gate reminds me of the temple part of the Sheepwreck Islands, and that's an underrated level. The Water Gate from Telescope Towers is a weird one for sure. You just take a big jump, go through some rings, and then bam, you're at the hat. It's weird, but in a good way. Since the beginning of this video, I've experienced some pretty bad block puzzles. And I can tell you that the Lost City of Arcus Magic Gate is not one of them. It's quite fun to do, and it actually requires some brain power. 
Now we have the fire gate from Goo Factory. This is a pretty cool gate, but I have to admit, getting grenades chucked at me while I'm trying to move blocks is a little bit annoying. Next up we have the Cascade Glade Fire Gate. This gate has some pretty fun platforming and introduces the volcano aesthetic. It looks really nice, but I kinda wish that it wasn't used for every single fire gate in the game. And then with the Motleyville Fire Gate, you're actually travelling around a massive volcano. The life gate from Drillex's big rig is a pretty good one. Not much to say about it, but it's good nonetheless. The Chaos' Fortress Earth Gate has you collecting parts to rebuild one of the Archean enemies that's seen in the level. Except this one's good, and gives you a hat. It's random and weird, but that's not a bad thing. At number 70, we have the Air Gate from Stormy Stronghold. This one is a complete classic, and I'm pretty sure this gate actually introduces bomb throwing, so it's pretty special. Deep down, I think we all love unlocking gates with keys, so let me introduce you to the satisfying mess that is the Troll Warehouse Life Gate. On one hand, it is super fun to just unlock tons of gates, but at the same time, if you unlock the gates in the wrong combination, then you won't be able to get every collectible. So, I guess, don't do what I did. The Pirate Sea's life gate has you pushing blocks, bouncing around, and even blowing up stuff. If they added a few enemies into this gate, it would literally have everything. The Undead Gate from Cutthroat Carnival is a big open one. There are quite a lot of these gates in Giants, and we'll be seeing some more of them later in the video. This one is definitely cool, but it's just not quite as cool as the other ones. Oh yeah, and I just realised that this has the exact, exact same block puzzle as the one from Pirate Seas. The one that we literally just talked about. Up next is the Undead Gate from Sheepwreck Islands. Instead of just having your standard spinning blades, this gate has spinning skulls. Now this is innovation. It also implements the teleportation from the actual level into the gate, and I have to say I just love it. Coming up at number 65, it's the Air Gate from Dragon's Peak. This has got to be one of my favourite obstacle course gates in the series. The area is literally called Obstacle Course. First of all, the Dragon's Peak is a beautiful level, so any gate that's set there is gonna look really nice. Second of all, it's just really well designed. It's fun and fast paced. Next up, we have the Earth Gate from Junkyard Isles. This gate brings back the mining mechanic that was seen in Sparrow's Adventure, and something about destroying all of those rocks with Crusher is really satisfying. The air gate from Time of the Giants works really well as a first level gate, and for that reason, it's pretty solid. The Life and Undead gate from Phantasm Forest looks incredible. I just love the combination of the undead and life. They work super well together. Apart from that, it's a pretty basic gate. Next up we have the Tech Gate from Tower of Time. I'm a pretty big fan of the time freezing idea, and this gate uses it pretty well and in a way that we don't actually see in the level. At number 60, it's the Water Gate from Mirror of Mystery. Something about how open and spacious this gate is makes me feel really calm. Either that or I'm going insane. And now it's time for Molken Mountain's second tech gate, Giants, why do you feel the need to do this? But I'm very happy to report that the second gate is much, much better than the first one. It's got these massive saws flying around, pretty fun. The Shattered Islands tech gate. In this gate for the first time, we see one of the most common obstacles in the gates. The spinning blades. These things have built up quite a legacy for themselves, and it all started here. And then two levels later, we have a gate that uses the spinning blades in a much more interesting way. Anything with spinning blades in it is guaranteed to be a decent time. The life gate from Iron Jaw Gulch takes a mechanic from the main level and puts a fun spin on it. I remember this gate being incredibly frustrating, but I had much more fun this time round. At number 55, we have the Stone Town Life Gate. Ever wonder why that level's called Stone Town? Well, this is why. This gate actually has you exploring the Stone Town, which is really neat. 
You can also blow up the houses too. That's a bonus. The Shattered Islands Watergate isn't as good as I remember it being. I don't know, it's just incredibly, incredibly simple. But it is still good looking and I still like it. The Twisty Tunnels Watergate is a bit strange. You have to keep on bouncing on the same moving platform until these shark guys can get down to the bottom. And you have to do this while spiky rocks come flying at you. From the front. Whether you'll get hit by one of these or not is completely luck based. But even though it's completely random and could get frustrating for some people, I do appreciate that it's different. Now we have the undead gate from Auto Gyro Adventure. This one's got a difficult fight, it's big and open, and it also has spinning blades! 10 out of 10 perfect! No. No way. No. Don't tell me that there's more spinning blades! That's right, the Lair of Chaos Magic Gate features spinning blades in the most challenging way yet. You'll have to be pretty careful and get the timing just right to beat this one. And at number 50, we have the Water Gate from Perilous Pastures. This is hands down one of the best block puzzles in the series. Along with that, it's got some really great music. But just slightly better than that is the Stormy Stronghold Life Gate. It's just a little bit more interesting. Next up is the Earth Gate from Time Town. Apart from an incredibly stupid glitch that I got, this is a very good gate. It uses the mining that we all know and love, and also looks really good. I kind of wish we got to see more of this waterfall mountain location. Next up we have the Earth Gate from Sky Schooner Docks. This one is so memorable and so unique. You have to bounce from island to island whilst a bunch of rocks are flying around. Bounce at the wrong time and you'll get blocked by them. I will admit that this is a bit of a glitchy gate. Sometimes you time it right and you fail, sometimes you time it wrong and you succeed. But that didn't stop me from having a great time. The Undead Gate from Empire of Ice is a bit of a touchy subject. You're dropped into this ice rink where you have to collect all of the skulls before the time runs out. I found it really fun to slide around the place and collect all the skulls, but on the other hand, it is a bit hard to control. There was a point where I was only missing a few skulls and I just had to cheese it with the secondary attack because it was taking so damn long. So I can definitely understand if you didn't have a good time with this one, but I kinda did. The Soda Springs Life Gate and the Know All Islands Earth Gate have some pretty cool weight mechanic puzzles. At number 43, we have the Water and Undead Gate from Mudwater Hollow. This gate has the most random, but also the cutest mechanic. There are three switches, but only one of them will open the gate to the hat. But which one's the right one? Well, that's where the baby fish come in. When you're next to one of the switches, the baby in front of it will either nod its head or shake its head. The one that nods is the one that has the right switch. I think this idea was pretty underutilised. They could have even had it in the actual level. But as it stands, cute as hell. Ah, oh, the tech gate from Perilous Pastures. This has to be one of the most recognisable gates in the series. And it's probably the biggest one in Sparrow's Adventure. It has tons of different islands to explore and a bunch of collectibles too. My only problem is that it doesn't have enough to do with tech in my opinion. But that's pretty much it. And now we have the Air Gate from Sheepbreak Islands. Okay, now I know how this looks, but don't worry. Only a few parts of this gate have hot air balloons. Apart from that, there's a bunch of fun bouncy platforms. And the gate uses the teleporting in quite a cool way. I also like the aesthetics. The yellow sky and the stone pillars. It's quite a nice looking place. At number 40, we have the Chaos's Fortress Water Gate. This gate features Mr. Chompy, who I very rudely didn't include in my Ranking Every Chompy video, so apologies to any Mr. Chompy fans out there. The Air Gate from Archean Armory is another obstacle course type gate that I found incredibly fun. I also like how the platforms are designed like cushions. Are they meant to be cushions, or is that just me? The Crawling Catacombs Undead Gate puts a unique spin on the weird eye timer things. 
You'll have to use bombs to activate them since they're so far spread out. The air gate from Twisty Tunnels does something different, which is certainly a breath of fresh air. Heh, <laughs> am I right? Please like me. Next up is the air gate from Phoenix Sanctuary. The blowing fan mechanic is a little bit slow paced, but it's still unique and I like it. Now I know it might look a little bit crazy to see a pinball gate at number 35, but the dark gate from Know All Islands mixes the pinball and block puzzles really well. I think it makes for a pretty fun and engaging puzzle. Next up is the creepy citadel air gate. This is a puzzling puzzle, and it left me puzzled. Need I say more? At number 33 we have the Twisty Tunnels, Undead and Earth Gate. Both of these elements are actually connected to the gate's idea. Basically these portals from hell appear, and then suddenly skeleton trolls start coming out of it from the ground. So you have to blow them up with dynamite to stop Satan from conquering the overworld, I don't know. Well either way, I like that this gate tries something new. Next up is the Shattered Islands Magic Gate. I'm sure a lot of you will recognise this gate as the very first one in the series. And, well, yeah, you'd be right. Despite it being a simple turtle block puzzle, this gate is revolutionary. I mean, we gotta give it some brownie points for that. It's also the first proper block puzzle, because the only time you push turtles before this gate is just to get them out of the way in a straight path. This gate achieved a lot of things, <laughs> and I'm just really proud of it. Next up is another classic, the Time of the Giants Life Gate. This one is another simple one, but that's a good thing. Plus, this gate is pretty revolutionary too. Compared to Sparrow's Adventure, the Giants gates feel a lot more connected to the element. And that's pretty obvious to see by the design of this gate. So yeah, another great one. At number 30 we have the Water Gate from Dark Water Cove. This gate is really, really enjoyable. It's got moving water rafts that you have to get across, and it's even got these statues that shoot flaming arrows. The only problem is you can cheese this pretty hard just by walking onto one of the rafts near the end, and I do not think it was intentional. But besides that, I still love this gate, and I think it's a whole lot of fun. The Glacier Gully Fire Gate is a nice open area. I also love how much it contrasts with the actual level. You also first see Fuego Chompies in this gate, can it get much better than that? I don't think so. Actually, no, it doesn't have spinning blades. Next up is the Magic Gate from Chaos's Castle. Now, this is a block puzzle that actually requires using that dusty old brain that you left on the shelf. At number 27, we have the Soda Springs Water Gate. This gate has a pretty cool mechanic. If you push one of the turtles into the big ring of air, then it'll start floating and move around. That's... That's pretty much the entire gate. Gonna be honest, I kinda wish this was a bit longer and used the mechanic in more interesting ways. But I still like the base idea that they had. Next up we have the air gate from Goo Factory. This gate uses wind physics, which forces you to bounce on the bounce pads with the wind changing your direction. This requires pretty precise platforming, and you have to plan your jumps with the wind physics in mind. Quite a fresh idea for a gate. At number 25 we have the Undead Gate from Chompy Mountain. This gate takes place in a small area along the side of the mountain. And I have to say it was executed perfectly. It looks really nice to see all of the level in the background. And it makes the gate really feel like a part of Chompy Mountain. I do think a problem that a lot of gates have is kind of feeling like they've just been put there for the sake of it. But this area feels like something that you'd see even if it wasn't a gate. It just works really well. The Mystic Mill Fire Gate. I'll admit that this one is a little bit boring. But oh my god, it looks incredible. The lighting effects and the detail of the lava just leaves me mesmerised. I just didn't expect this gate to be so insanely detailed. So I personally think that it deserves a spot. The Molken Mountain Undead Gate actually references one of the parts of Perilous Pastures, which I think is incredibly cool. I was definitely not expecting to see this, but it was a nice surprise. The Troll Warehouse Fire Gate lets you walk across lava like you would with water, and it makes for a pretty interesting gate. 
and the Lava Lake's Railway Fire Gate is similar to that, but there's a lot more exploration in this one, and there is generally just more to do in this gate. At number 20 we have the Future of Skylands Fire Gate. In this one you have to travel around a mini sun which has fiery rings moving around. Not only is that already a really cool concept, but it also fits perfectly with the space theme of the level. Just like some other gates, it would be a whole lot better if it was a bit longer and used the mechanic more. The Cadaverous Crypt Earth Gate and the Cadaverous Crypt Tech Gate are both weird minigames. In the Earth one you have to escape from a pitch black maze before the time runs out. And for the Tech one you have to collect all of the skulls before the time runs out. It's kinda like the Empire of Ice Undead Gate, except it has 100% less ice physics. I love that both of these gates from Cadaverous Crypt give us something new to enjoy. At number 17 we have the Undead Gate from Phantasm Forest. This gate would just be your average 2D platforming section if it wasn't for one special thing. It takes place in the Shadow Realm. Yep, the aesthetics of this gate is really the only thing that's carrying it here. But my god, it looks insanely cool. Some of you might recognise this style from the Donkey Kong Country series. And I'm quite surprised to see it work so well on Skylanders. But as I said, insanely cool. Also, it makes your Skylanders look demonic, so just a heads up there. Next up is one that's quite infamous on my channel, the Watergate from Sky Highlands. Well, I have to say, apart from that terrifying glitch that scarred me for life, this is a really, really interesting gate. The hat is in the centre of the area, and you have to keep on working up and raising the water levels to be able to finally get to the top and get the hat. But really, I do not know what to tell you, just don't look at the gate in the wrong way. It could mess you up bad. At number 15 we have the Earth Gate from Crystal Eye Castle. I wouldn't say that this puzzle is exactly difficult, but it's incredibly fun. I found it oddly satisfying to keep on pressing buttons to move the blocks up and down and reveal new pathways. It's overall just such an awesome gate. Well, I mean, that's it. It's got no problems, it's incredibly fun, let's move on. At number 14 we have the Life Gate from Noah All Islands. Does this layout look familiar to you? Well if it doesn't, shame on you, this is obviously a reference to the Falling Forest. And I mean, they weren't going for subtle here. It perfectly replicates Falling Forest in all of its glory. I will be honest here, the actual Falling Forest does look better than this, but it's just a gate. They didn't have to put this much effort in, but they did. On the contrary, your average schmo might say that this is just laziness, copying and pasting. And I would agree with that if they did this multiple times, but nope, this is the only one. And it's truly a stroll down memory lane. At number 13 we have the Earth Gate from Operation Troll Rocket Steel. I think it's obvious by now that I love elemental gates that have a cool and original idea. And this one? This one's got that. I mean come on, you're climbing up an anthill by using leaves as platforms that the ants are carrying. Well I mean, they're not actually ants, they're terrifying four-legged spiders, but you get the idea. I could see an entire level being built around this mechanic. Actually, I can't believe they didn't bring this idea back for Gladfly Glades. These opportunities, you can't waste them. Anyways, whoever came up with this gate idea is a genius. In 12th place is the Air Gate from Frostfest Mountains. This gate uses this random fan mechanic in a really cool way. Basically, getting pushed by this fan will make your jumps go way, way further. And I have to say, it's incredibly fun. Once again, I just wish it was longer, please! All of the fun ones are over and done with in the blink of an eye. <laughs> and then you've got, then you've got Battlefield Undead. <clears throat> just being rejected from the top 10 club, we have the Lost City of Arcus Firegate. Lots of people think that the Glacier Gully Firegate is the better one from Giants. But I have to say, no, you're wrong. This gate has even more exploration. And the whole idea of this gate is that there's a hat in the middle that's on top of a massive stone pillar. So you have to find cannons that are on different levels of the area, and gradually you will destroy the stone pillar. 
So yeah, this is a pretty good one. It did have one of those ambushes that wiped out six of my Skylanders, but whatever. At number 10, we have the Fire Gate from Chef Zeppelin. This one has an engaging puzzle, has a pretty nice design, and has a cool original idea that fits with the level. This gate's all about baking bread. You have to push these trays of dough into the fire so that they bake into bread and you can use them as platforms. As I said, really cool idea and the whole baking thing fits with the Chef Zeppelin. And for that reason this gate has always been one of my favourites. In at number 9 we have the Water Gate from Troll Home Security. One of my favourite things about this gate is that, just like the Chompy Mountain Undead gate, it feels like a part of the level. During this level's start and cutscene, you can see this big area where the gate takes place, and it makes the gate feel a lot more natural. Along with that, it's another big and open gate, and we love to see those. So what does this gate have that makes it so special? Spinning blades. Except they're not exactly spinning blades. It's like these spinning gargoyle statue things, and they look incredibly cool. It's got some secrets, a light beam puzzle, and another ambush fight, God damn it! But hey, spinning blades, am I right? At number 8 we have another one of Giant's big open water gates from Aerial Attack. Firstly, I have to say this area looks fantastic. I think it would have made for an excellent level. But I think we should also address the elephant in the room. Yes, there is ball rolling. <laughs> we know how much I dislike ball rolling. But luckily, Giants pretty nicely fixed the terrible physics. So whilst rolling these balls isn't exactly fun, it's not tedious or annoying either. But for the positives, it's got some really tight level design, and they do try to utilise the ball rolling in the most enjoyable way possible. There's only so much you can do though. But despite that, this gate really caught me off guard. I really wasn't expecting to find a gate this good. I suppose the bad gates just make the good ones better. Anyways, this gate was a really good time. At number 7 we have the first life gate from Rumble Town, otherwise known as Quigley's Grotto. This is the first of several large open gates that we see in Giants. And when it comes to the big open gates, this one does it best. This gate feels like it's an entirely different level. There's just so much stuff to do in this area. It also first introduces the ambush fights, so that's a problem. And as much as I do not like getting bullied by three evil stealth elves, this just has all of the ingredients for a fantastic gate. And no, not even three evil stealth elves can stop me from thinking that. At number 6 we have the Tech Gate from Motleyville. You may be wondering to yourself, why the Tech Gate from Motleyville? And I'll admit, Swap Force has had a lot of crappy gates, but this one, this one's different. Throughout the gate you can pick up these weird glowing orbs, and if you throw it, you'll teleport to where it lands. Is it just me, or is that freaking awesome? I've never seen anything quite like this from a gate. Like sure, some of them have pretty cool ideas here and there, but this is on a whole different level. What can I say, teleporting around the place is just as good as it sounds. And at number 5 we have the Tech Gate from Phantasm Forest. This gate also uses the teleportation gimmick, but with slightly better level design. I kinda wish that there was only one of these gates because having multiple of them kinda takes away the magic, but that doesn't mean that they aren't incredibly fun. And if you missed out on these gates, I suggest you go back and play them. At number 4, we have the Magic Gate from Treetop Terrace. The entire gate revolves around climbing up the interior of a massive tree. And I love it from a design aspect, I love it from a gameplay aspect, but don't play it if you're afraid of heights. Once again, I do wish there was more of it. It's just a shame that most of these great gates are really short, but it's a special gate nonetheless. Snatching today's bronze place is the Air Gate from Aerial Attack. Who expected Aerial Attack to have two really good gates? Not me anyway. This gate has a mechanic where you jump from island to island. And when I say jump, I mean a big jump. It's bizarre, but not the most bizarre thing I've seen from a gate. This gate also quenches my thirst for fast paced platforming, 
Exploration and great level design. Maybe this gate was a way for them to apologise for forgetting to add a jump button. Don't worry, I forgive you. In the number 2 spot, I have the Midnight Museum Magic Gate. Never before have I seen a gate that's had so much potential. So when the gate starts you pick up this eye. And with this eye you can see obstacles that were invisible before. You guys might not see it, but this could have been utilised so much more. Actually, the Midnight Museum was a perfect level to use this in. That level is pretty focused around eyes after all. Sadly in the gate it's only used for a couple of little spinning blades. You only use this mechanic on one obstacle, but you picked the right obstacle. Honestly when I look at this gate, all I feel is disappointment. They had such a juicy idea here, but they didn't even try to squeeze it. That was a weird analogy. But the concept is so great that I just can't give the gate any slander. But this mechanic could have been something great. My favourite elemental gate in the entire series goes to the tech gate from Secret Vault of Secrets. Jumping into this gate, we're greeted by the one and only Clamtron 4000. I missed you buddy. And after chatting with him, we get to play the most incredibly well designed gate in the series. This gate is all about these clockwork walls that you can turn with switches. This gate is extra special because this mechanic was actually planned to be in Sparrow's Adventure, but were sadly scrapped. But thankfully this gate managed to make use out of them. And they just work so well for a fun puzzle. Whilst of course they could have done more with this mechanic, I feel like the gate makes really good use out of them. And I didn't even know this gate existed until I played Giants for this video. And that is a crime, this gate is so underrated. And it deserves more than that. The only thing it's missing is spinning blades. But then again, the walls do spin. Yep, we're gonna count that. Well, you happy now? We did it. We ranked all 157 elemental gates. And I have to say, after playing every single one of them, I could admit the gates are a problem. They offer you some side content, normally just a basic platforming section or a fighting section, but they are locked behind a paywall. But having one Skylander of each element isn't really asking much. Until Trap Team when only Trap Masters could unlock the gates. And this doesn't only mean that you can't use the less expensive cores to open gates, but you also can't use Skylanders from previous games. And I think that's where a lot of distaste for elemental gates came from. There are definitely some great gates, but overall they're quite mediocre. The majority of these gates have nothing interesting to offer. And that really makes me question whether they're worth it or not. Anyways, if I were to rank these four games based on the elemental gates they had overall, I would say Swap Force is the worst, then Sparrow's Adventure, then Trap Team, then Giants. Yeah, I'd like to purchase five spinning blades, please. What do you mean I need a license? I should call my lawyer. When? Okay. Turns out my lawyer has a restraining order against me. I should see a lawyer about that. <laughs> 